my name is Anderson Harvey, and I work under the, the Criminal Enforcement Department on the Navy PA. Uh, bear with me this morning, so I'm going to a little bit. <laughs> been sick for a while, so <clears throat> anyway. Uh, within the Navajo Nation Environmental Protection Agency, we, we are the Criminal Enforcement Department. Uh, basically, uh, you're going to go to um, the number of presenters that are here. Uh, they're going to talk about different areas of their responsibilities, and we do the criminal part of it. So there are a number of um, um, areas that, that uh, requires if there's a violation out there when it comes to environmental issues, that's when we come in. So, um, again, my name is Anderson Harvey. Tutsong in Shlilo, Tua Atlini Vashas Chin, Tabaras Chin, Kachin, Vashanam. So, go ahead. Um, I don't have a whole lot of staff. Uh, I do have Officer Court Gate Station out in the Cove area, so he covers the eastern and Northern Navajo Agency, and then Officer Arnold Mary Bull, he covers the whole uh, Western Navajo, uh, including Newlands area. And then an office specialist, Marlon Yazi, and our contact information down below. Um, we are a fully commissioned law enforcement department. Uh, we are uh, authorized and sanctioned law enforcement department. Um, Back in 1996, uh, the Navajo Nation was sued by DNA, and basically, uh, EPA was told that they, they developed so many laws, regulations, and policies that they, you don't have any officers to enforce all of those. Um, that lawsuit was focused primarily on uh, illegal dumping of uh, um, waste. So. EPA got together with uh, two other law enforcement agencies. One is Navajo Police, and the other one is uh, with uh, Resource Enforcement under the Division of Natural Resource. Uh, they both um, told Navajo EPA that they didn't have time to uh, deliver those services. So, uh, however, with the Rangers program, they went ahead since they were under the Division of Natural Resource, uh, doing natural resource work. <coughs> Uh, I was brought over uh, on, a, on, a, on an agreement uh, with Navajo EPA primarily to focus on illegal dumping. So um, based on that, we uh, started the program, but we were under the uh, Navajo Rangers color. So meaning that we were only doing a certain amount of work for Navajo EPA and a certain amount of work for the Rangers. And it wasn't going so well for a couple of years, so um, under the uh, under the Title II Navigation Code, uh, EPA uh, director <coughs> has the authority to enforce rules. So um, primarily, we started with that focus, and we had a lot of a lot of meetings, uh, not only with the tribal uh, with our <coughs> town oversight committees, uh, other programs that we need to deal with, but. Um, we were, uh, in order to establish the criminal enforcement department, we had to deal with the state of Arizona, including the federal uh, Bureau of Investigations and so on. So with all that coming together uh, in 2001, we broke off of the uh, Rangers program and we became our own criminal investigative unit that, that handles uh, environmental laws and policies. So. Um, we did develop a plan of operation that is basically to facilitate the enforcement of criminal environmental laws to enforce all nomination laws that protect the quality of um, nomination environment. Uh, we are an effective law enforcement agencies according to all of the uh, policies that were established. Uh, we do carry the Arizona Police Officer Standard Train Board Commission, uh, New Mexico Law Enforcement, and we do have a cross commission agreement with Navajo Division of Public Safety, so basically we carry their uh, commission as well as our own uh, Navajo EPA uh, commission status. So that gives us the authority to 
uh, investigate environmental crimes within the territorial jurisdiction of the Navajo Nation. So all of the officers that we work with, that we brought on board, and the ones that moved on to other positions, uh, including today, uh, they are certified as a federal law enforcement criminal investigation um, certification process that they uh, attain in addition to the state criminal investigation. So um, basically that's just to gain more knowledge, gain more understanding uh, for our officers to do their, their work. Uh, the criminal force department again is uh, to supplement the air, toxic water, and solid waste department. So there's going to be a number of presenters uh, going over their programs, and those are the programs that we work with um, day to day. <coughs> and basically, the the purpose of that is to protect the public health and environment of the Navajo Nation through enforcement actions, criminal investigations, inspections, monitoring criminal activities, collection of data and evidence, obtaining funding, coordination with affected travel programs, public outreach, and other uh, areas. The department also promotes and enhances the quality of public safety through cooperative enforcement and challenges, gathering, training employees of law enforcement agencies, and increasing public awareness of criminal environmental activities. So these are some of the stuff that we worked on, and we um, provide uh, outreach program to 110 chapters. So. Uh, we did that in the beginning. We did we did all of that outreach uh, on a on a monthly basis. Um, we provided all those services, but with the limited resources that we have within the department, uh, we kind of cut down on that. <coughs> uh, right now, um, if any chapters or schools or anybody that requests uh, a presentation when it comes to um, our department, we go ahead and assign our staff to those areas. Um, these are uh, some of the EPA acts that we're, that we're working under, uh, that we work with, uh, Navigation Pesticide, Clean Water Act, Air Pollution, Safe Drinking Water. Uh, Ronnie didn't mention the UIC, Underground Storage, or excuse me, um, Underground Storage Tank and when we're investigating these areas, time and time again, we will come across uh, Title 17 or Title, title 14 uh, violations out there. So those uh, criminal statutes, Title 17 and 14, do apply to to some of the acts that we that we investigate out in the field. So um, again, like we said, we do com uh, carry commission card to enforce these rules also. Uh, investigations involved, but not limited to uh, legal disposal of hazardous waste, discharge of pollutant to the waters of Navajo Nation, uh, removal and disposal of, of regulated asbestos, hazardous materials, tampering and drinking water supply, criminal littering, illegal automotive, automotive recycling activities. Um, this is one of the main areas that the Navajo Nation is up against is the uh, illegal dumping within the Navajo Reservation, which is, um, even though we come across people during our investigations that we identify people that are responsible. However, when it comes to prosecution level, it seems like there's a, there's a big area to where people don't really, or the departments don't really want to deal with it in a way. Uh, even though the violations do happen out there, uh, we do give them uh, a number of days to make those corrections, but once those are resolved, um, case closed. But some of these issues right here, those need to be prosecuted according to um, some of the statutes, and it needs to be really looked into. Uh, not only that, but um, all of these uh, rules that apply to um, what is being damaged out there uh, within our uh, narrow uh, reservation. Here's an example of <coughs> some of the stuff that we worked on, uh, construction degrees. Um, 
a lot of the construction that are being out there, demolition projects, uh, local communities or chapters or whoever, um, they always run out to the construction site and request for demolition debris. Uh, those are considered a waste. And when some of these contain asbestos, uh, normally the people run out to the, the companies and tell them that, okay, I'm going to need, uh, am I able to, are you able to bring all that waste to the wash that's about maybe a quarter mile from where we live and dump it down there for erosion control? Well, that's illegal dumping. Um, so basically this is a, a no-no uh, type of situation. Um, again, another construction debris. Uh, you'll see the, the whole uh, wash area over here, but the main water washes on the side, but pretty much this is uh, an area where the local people were concerned about, so they um, had the construction people run out there and dump these debris down there for erosion control. And it's a money-saving thing for the construction owners. Uh, they save money this way, uh, illegally dumping all this way, so um, Again, uh, construction debris, same thing. Uh, erosion control, or people can't afford to dump their waste at a at a um, proper facilities. Uh, there are facilities not only on the reservation but off the reservation also, so where they can dispose of it. But a lot of people they want to save some money. They don't want to spend so much money dumping all this waste, but. Uh, they consider it an erosion control, and it looks nasty. Um, this is Chin Lake, uh, Arizona. All this construction debris is the former Navajo police building right there in Chin Lake. Uh, local residents came out, and they request for this debris to be scattered within their driveway. So. Majority of that waste were disposed of right there where the, uh, I think they have a Denny's right sitting right here right now. But uh, we went in there and made the company come back and clean up all this mess. This is this is an awful, uh, no good site and it looks uh, nasty at the time. But uh, this is some of the stuff that we worked on to where they got rid of all this debris. So um, again, same thing. Um, not a good site. <laughs> There's a lot of remote areas on the Navajo Reservation. This is up in Utah. Uh, one of the local residents residing in California uh, decided to come home and build some kind of a biofuel company and he's going to make all this profit and everything. But unfortunately, the guy didn't have a, a business site of It wasn't approved by the local chapters. Uh, a lot of people were being were concerned because a lot of this 55-gallon uh, drums were shipped out in the middle of the night by a company out of California. So these type of activities are happening on the reservation. Uh, what these barrel contains are asphalt. The asphalt was uh, from a grocery parking lot out of California, and. The asphalt was supposed to be used for a driveway into the business site, and uh, there were so many, so many barrels out there. And um, as you can see, some of these barrels are uh, these are new, newer shipment with long load, the ones that are, uh, has been there for a while. So uh, a lot of these are happening on the reservation. So a lot of these are can be prosecuted, but when it comes to uh, having preparing our case files, presenting them to the prosecutors and all that. It seems like they, it, 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 there's just a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding to prosecute these areas because, um, again, we need to sit down with the prosecutors, we need to sit down with the judicial people and, 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 and uh, provide this understanding. Ronnie did mention uh, uh, about his staff, and we do have other environmental staff that can clearly testify to the contents of these barrels, saying that, yes, this is how much waste it is, this is what it is, this is what is going to happen 
if it's not corrected, if it's not prosecuted, um, it's going to damage our our soil. And you know, there's waterways nearby. You know, those are some of the stuff that we, we really need to uh, uh, focus on. And the more understanding of this area uh, is more meaningful when it comes to prosecutions. Your day-to-day -day, uh, illegal dumpers, um, this is happening all over the reservation. A lot of these are after the fact issues. So basically, uh, if we do come across uh, names and um, address and all that, we'll just email, uh, excuse me, mail uh, compliance orders to these and make those corrections within so many days, if not, we'll prosecute them. But generally, a lot of people respond to the notice of violations that are being issued to them. Um, biomedical waste, uh, this is another problem in, in some areas. Um, we see a lot of these uh, on the reservation and um, where people, uh, the, the Indian Health Service does have a policy on this. And they sit down with their patient and explain to them how to dispose of these used syringes out there. So, um, in other words, there's families out there that are afraid to touch these. So they don't want to take it back to the Indian Health Service or they don't want to provide this stuff to the uh, CHR personnel that are visiting these uh, clients. But somehow they end up in a wash or just dump it alongside the road. And, uh, we had a, a family not too far from here. They, they had a whole couple of boxes of these. Uh, instead of taking it back to the proper facility, they just dumped it wash further up uh, upstream. So basically when the water came out, it all came back down to the residence. So uh, kids were around there and, and, and it was nasty. But fortunately we worked with the uh, CHR on this and collected the water. Uh, these are some of the stuff that uh, we find out there. Um, I don't remember what exactly what this was, uh, but we did work with the Joseph City. There's a um, uh, hazmat cleanup team out there. That they came out and cleaned up all this mess, but it was chemical. Right? We didn't know where it came from, how it got there, how long it's been sitting there. Uh, snow, this was during the winter time, so it did look like it's been sitting there for at least a year, over a year or so. Again, your uh, construction debris um, out there, big problem. Uh, not a good site in every community. It's nasty, it's ugly. Uh, chapters need to be uh, more effective in their assisting the communities on uh, disposal. So, even though we do provide these presentations out, uh, out in the communities, uh, they're still happening. So basically, ignorance is uh, one of the areas. Household, again, another household. <laughs> we did have a major problem um, several years ago, probably in 2008 and nine, where the metal prices were skyrocketing and uh, China and India, uh, so basically we had companies um, coming on the reservation from Texas, Louisiana, from Phoenix, from California. They were roaming around all over the reservation collecting these junk autos. Um, Navajo Nation doesn't really have a policy on auto recycling. Um, we did have a major problem because uh, some of the investigations that we were doing on these, um, they were purchasing these junk autos from residents uh, for anywhere from $15 to $25 a vehicle. But at times, the metal prices were pretty high. Uh, this automobile on top, they probably made a profit of about maybe $800 on up at the time. So, uh, they were making a killing. Uh, the companies that were roaming out there without business site lease, uh, without any permits, you know, they were just 
basically just roaming around the reservation. A lot of people were complaining about it. <coughs> um, the company that brought these equipment were out of El Paso. Uh, again, you know, I'm not a racist or anything, you know, but the owners of this were Middle Eastern, a lot of uh, Texas area. Uh, very hard to, to, to work with those people. Uh, they won't respond to you, they don't call you back, they don't, you know, as long as they get their stuff from here, reservation, um, you know, it was very, very difficult to uh, pinpoint exactly who they were and stuff like that, but they do have um, people that were working for them that were coming on the reservation, bringing these equipment. Uh, the people that were residing with them about 20, 20 yards from this um, set up, they were paid uh, $50 to have these equipment set up for like two months. And the company themselves, again, were roaming around collecting junk orders from across the reservation. They were bringing them to uh, this home site in this area, which wasn't even fenced in. There was no house there. There was a lot of kids roaming around there. Um, they created a mess out there. Um, so these are some of the areas that we have addressed before the administration at the time. So there was supposed to be a uh, some kind of a regulation or policy developed by economic development to where instead of having the companies off the reservation do business, this type of business on the reservation, uh, at the time there was a discussion made to where uh, why can't we have our own local uh, people uh, go to these type of business? So. Um, in the long run, uh, there was a lot, a lot of money involved with this, and we got very little uh, money out of this. Again, when you're crushing automobiles and all that, you're going to come across petroleum waste, blast debris, like I said, kids were roaming around, playing around on these equipment, very unhealthy, very unsafe, um, it was nasty, but uh, fortunately, we had the company clean up all this mess and dump it into a couple of vehicles and crush it and shift it off. So uh, it was very hard to prosecute. Um, Two City 160 project, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, soil, contaminated soil, were being shipped out. So we had to uh, schedule with the company to escort these vehicles off the reservation up into Utah. So um, time and time again, we'll come across uh, semis that are going through the main uh, roadway through the reservation and some of the stuff that we see <coughs> on there, like in this case, they're, they're hazardous waste. So we're concerned about having these vehicles. Uh, basically, we didn't want them to stop anywhere you know, just once you get on the highway, you, get, you stay on that road till you get off the Navajo Reservation. So uh, this would be a scary sight, you know, if people understood, understood the placards on this and uh, what happens if it tips over, you know, and then it creates a big situation for uh, not only the Navajo Nation, but the uh, ADOT or NDOT, whatever. Again, um, the agreement was that these truckers were not supposed to stop, but unfortunately we came across one of the vehicles out in Kanta area, parked at the Burger King, and getting a couple of burgers, and his shipment was parked outside, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's no good, not a good sign. I'm not sure why anybody would want to buy junk autos from off the reservation, hoping that they would use a, in this case, this is an old fuel uh, fuel tank truck uh, that they bought from uh, off the reservation and they were driving it back to uh, their residence, um, basically to run the truck and haul water in this for livestock. And that's an old fuel petroleum um, Tank that they tried to get home, but fortunately nobody got hurt. But um, unfortunately, the truck brake 
brakes went out and they just went straight into the wash area coming down the uh, coming down the roadway. So um, these are just junk. I don't know why you know <laughs> I don't know why you want to have something like this park at your house. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. This is another area that we came across. Uh, gentleman that was working in construction up in uh, Utah and the Mexico side uh, had an area out in Mexico where he was collecting all these uh, waste. As you can see, a lot of these automobiles are old and for how long they've been parked there, we don't know. But um, <coughs> the gentleman deceased and his family went in there and decided to do some cleanup. So basically, we have them out, um, coordinate all that. So of course, uh, there's prices for uh, metal to be recycled and all that. So those are some of the areas that we worked with uh, that family, and they shipped everything out. Um, some of these were, most of these were empty, but the ones that are, uh, had some petroleum residue in there and so forth, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, dangerous. So. Um, we have the family out. We were fortunate enough to uh, um, really good family to work with, so we make corrections on all that. Again, um, this is one of the areas uh, at a school uh, that um, they had their own water well for the school, but um, they went ahead and stopped that water well, so they hooked up to the uh, your Navajo Tribal Utility Authority water line, and that shed that we showed you earlier, um, that contained, uh, I believe, it was sulfur, sulfur acid, and it's, it was sitting there for for a number of years because they were using that to neutralize their own water well. <coughs> Excuse me, and. When they, when they did the attachments, uh, they were going to ship that um, shed, uh, you know, put it into debris and ship it off the reservation, but they didn't know that they had a chemical uh, in there, um, acid uh, coma. So it created a whole problem, not only for the school, but local communities, but it wasn't it wasn't that significant. Um, they did neutralize the area. Uh, we brought in Montezuma Creek Fire Department, uh, uh, Arizona Hazmat Team from Phoenix. Uh, we did coordinate all that and to remove all of this uh, chemical because the kids were in school. Uh, they were excused because of the spill and they didn't came back for a couple of days once they got rid of all of this. So some these are some of the stuff that were happening. And Personally, I think this, this section right here should have been prosecuted also, but we're still working on this and uh, something that we uh, need to have um, uh, checked into more thoroughly. So, uh, range management unit for livestock. Uh, again, northwestern Arizona. Um, the people that were living here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they developed a range management unit and everything was going well. They had a number of livestock. And one of the family members came back from far off and decided to do a recycling point. And unfortunately, he was collecting all these junk metals and everything. Um, it, uh, about the previous slide, and he got arrested for something, so he was spending some time in the federal penitentiary. And the family that were given this range management unit, they were concerned about this, but uh, we basically just told them to go in there and, and drag everything out of there and recycle them. So that's uh, what they did. We did work with the Department of Ag on this, so they were uh, the main responsible department um, at the time to oversee that operation since it was a uh, range management unit. So, um, uh, tribal buildings uh, abandoned back in 2006. Um, 
The bench chasing was still on. Uh, doors were unlocked, the windows were all boarded up. The back door was open. Uh, this has been sitting there for uh, since 2006 after the shutdown. And this is what we found in, the, in that building. Um, there was a gentleman that was recharging his cell phone in that area. Uh, came across one of the and a couple of boxes that were sitting there, thinking that uh, the boxes contained um, uh, the stuff that they use for drywalling. Um, so he took that home, put it by his wood stove, and heated up, and this is contaminated this whole house. Uh, some EMS responded; they got affected. Um, we went back and uh, saw all of this inside the building. A lot of chemicals sitting there, um, formaldehyde, poison. You know, these are the kind of stuff that that uh, that are out there, and and they should be prosecuted according to uh, you know our department. Some of the stuff that were out there are nasty. Uh, they're being mishandled, they're negligence involved, and so forth. You know? uh, and this is some of the stuff, again. Uh, collection point for an industry on Navajo. Uh, it's a no, no, no. This is, you can't do it. It has to be shipped off to reservation, so we make sure they make corrections on it. Same thing, construction debris dumped on the wash for erosion control. It wasn't authorized. Um, as a law enforcement officer, we assist uh, other agencies, rangers, fish and game, forestry, uh, Navajo police. So one of the officers out there uh, assisted uh, another agency. And uh, this is just some of the stuff that we've been doing. DUI traffic stop, we do enforce this under Title 14. So, um, like I said, we're commission officers, and again, uh, we do a lot of public relations with the officers out in the field, so I've got two officers <coughs> that does toys for tots every year, and this is Officer Alex Yazi. He was one of our officers for 10 years, and he uh, primarily focused up in Cape, uh, Shipra and Crown Point area, so, but he passed on uh, last March. So I thought I'd put in this slide because uh, this is what we did, what we do, and basically he looks, he looks sharp out there. So um, again, Twitch for Tom with Alex. So um, thank you for uh, presentation. Now we'll cut you, it looks pretty. Thank you.